for he was veiled from this world, concentrating on heedlessness. What is this heedlessness? How can Hazrati Insan that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us to be his Khalifa, that he has commanded all of the angels? Angels are holding the power. Malaika, they're holding the power, meaning everything in creation must bend to the will of man that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created to be his representative. How can man be in ghaflat? What is it, this heedlessness, that causes a man to be in ghaflat? What is it? And what happens when you are heedless? People are running after mystical knowledge, but they don't even have knowledge of themselves. They are running after mystical knowledge, but they don't even know who they are. If you don't know who you are, you don't know who your Lord is. If you don't know who your Lord is, what are you worshipping? Your ego. Something that you make up to be your Lord. If you don't know who your Lord is, how can you worship Him? How can you serve Him? What kind of mystical knowledge it is going to be useful? Shaitan knows mystical knowledge too. Shaitan knows. Knowledge reaching up all the way to the paradises. He was inside the paradise. No one can be higher than shaitan in understanding this mystical knowledge. Yet, when Allah commanded Azazil at that time, to say, now, bow down to my representative, that way you're going to bow down to me. Correct? Bow down to that one. He's going to teach you about yourself. And you will then learn how to bow down to me. Satan says, no, I bow down only to you. I don't need anyone to teach me how to. So the way to Allah now, it is according to his ego. How can Hazrat Insan be heedless? What makes a person to be heedless? To be in gaflet? Who are the ones who are not in gaflet? The prophets, they are not in gaflet. They will Allah, they are not in gaflet. The prophets. And in moments when we have our manners, we are not going to say that they make a sin. Hasha, astaghfirullah. Moments when they may make a mistake, astaghfirullah, that they slip, Allah is showing what it is that is that was affecting them as a human so that we will learn from it those ones who were never in gauntlet and we are seeing moments when they slip a little bit how much Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making them to go through Hazrat Adam, Safiullah, 
He was living in paradise. He understood everything from paradise. He tasted everything from paradise that we cannot even imagine. What is making him to eat from that fruit, that wheat? What is making him to do that and to forget about the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What is it that made his son, Qabil, to lose his identity, to want to kill his own brother? That they were the first ones in this world. What is it that is making all these ones on the way of Haq and those ones who are on the way of Batil? to commit all those actions that they are doing. What is causing them to lose themselves? Easy for people to say is shaitan. Shaitan is making you to lose yourself. Shaitan will not enter into your heart if you don't open the door. This is the whole point now. Your heart, you have to take care of it. Your heart, you have to protect it because the heart now it is the throne of Allah. What is the good that you're searching for the knowledge, reaching all the way to Sidratul Muntaha, when your own heart, it is filled with dirtiness? That you're not understanding who you're worshipping, you're not understanding what is your ego, you're not understanding what is shaitan, you're not understanding this, you're not understanding now the enemies, that they are always, you're opening the door, they are polluting your heart now. If you're not understanding that, it is like the man who has all the weapons in the world to destroy the wrong. And he has the power to push the button. But the one who is telling him to push the button, it is his nafs, it is his ego. In the form, in the guise of haq. How are you going to know? Holy Prophet is saying, hidden shirk. There is no more shirk for the nation, he's saying, those ones who are believers. Muslims are not going to turn to start worshipping idols the way that earlier nations, they always do. Within one generation that the Prophet passed, they start worshipping idols. One generation. Some of them, they are so chosen by Allah subhanAllah, they are so favored in the time of their Prophet. When their Prophet was talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they make an idol to worship. That story is not to say we are better. That story to say it is in us, every one of us. That the Prophet saying, the hidden shirk, it is harder to see, to detect, to know than a black ant on a black rock in the blackest part of the night. And tasawuf must begin and end with that. Everything that comes, all the knowledges and all the experience that comes is must be because of that. Otherwise, you think it is knowledge, but you're already worshipping other than Allah. You think those ones that were worshipping the golden calf, they were challenging Allah? You think those ones that they are saying, oh, this is our partner to Allah? No. In their mind, they are making philosophy to themselves, understandings to themselves, ideas to themselves. It is nothing. This is some, because we want to see magic, they are saying. We want to see Allah the way that Musa is seeing Allah. We want to see that. We cannot see that. Eh, at least we can see this golden calf that is moving around like this. How cheap mankind can be when you are following to your nafs in the way of the prophets. You are not watching this. In the way of the prophets, you are going to commit the biggest wrong things. That so many in the way of tariqat, they're committing big wrong things. Some of them, they start thinking, I'm a saint. Some of them, they start thinking, I have direct connection. Nothing I'm doing is wrong. Some of them, they start saying, 
I have so much mystical knowledge now. Hmm. I don't need to pray. I don't need to fast. I am above chariot. Every time someone is pursuing that kind of mystical knowledge, this is the first thing they do. I've never seen anyone who's stepping on their ego, concentrating on that hidden shirk, that they say, I don't have to pray, I don't have to fast, I don't have to do nothing, I'm above. Never. So pretty soon you're going to say that. And so many have done that. And some, they go, they make claims now. They make more and more claims. They're going to even say, I'm higher than this saint and that saint. They're going to say now, because they see something, they get dazzled. They get drunk. Huh? Then that time the ego is going to whisper to them and shaitan is going to feed it. Don't you know? You're seeing this. Abdul Qadir Gilani Hazrat Ali is also seeing this. You are the same. You are seeing this. Ibn Arabi is also seeing this. It's the same. Huh? The same things, don't you see, the prophets they are going through? Uh, some of them, they will even believe themselves to be higher than prophets. This has happened for 124,000 prophets too. That there are some, they are teaching something that is very precious, valuable, the hidden knowledge. They are teaching to them and they take the hidden knowledge and they twist it because they are not ready. Because they didn't finish the hidden idols yet. Because they didn't even start to understand what is La ilaha illallah. They want to go all the way to Sitrat al-Muntaha. But they don't even know what is La ilaha illallah. What is the ilah? What is the idol that you want to first say la to, to destroy? And that time, those ones are going to say, oh, I go to such high station. I don't see anyone here but me. It must be because I am Allah. What makes a man to become a heedless when he doesn't have a guide, when he doesn't follow his guide, when he's not taking his guide as his imam, as his guide in front of him in the decisions that he's making every year, every month, every day, whether he is putting that guide in front of him for things concerning his family, his business, his life, his this or his that. What is that putting the guide in front? That is called sunnat. We are putting the Prophet wasalam, there. That the Prophet wasalam, is guiding us in everything that we are doing. When you are not taking the guide, the guidance of the Prophet wasalam, because you don't understand, you say, a Prophet saying this, I am saying this, this one is saying this, it's the same, I can take from anywhere. Then you finish. You finish. You are not taking Muhammad Rasulullah. That time, what kind of la ilaha illallah are you going to know? Yes, that kind of la ilaha illallah you're going to know the way that the Bani Israel, the Yahudis, they're going to know la ilaha illallah. They say la ilaha illallah and they're running, killing their prophets. Or you're going to say la ilaha illallah the way that the Christians are going to say la ilaha illallah, but there's this, there's this, and there is this. We're coming to the month of Ramadan. Where if anything, you're going to understand your own weakness and you're going to understand your own strength. Don't look to the weakness or strength only in terms of your body. Don't say, oh, I'm not going to eat. First, I'm going to feel so weak. Then later, I'm going to feel so good. Because Ramadan has become just like that. That is a fasting for those ones who are on the animal level. You want to be animal level, then what claim you have of saying that you're a believer? Look to your strength and look to your weakness, how it is attacking your spirit. These are the days where you're going to look, you're going to understand, you're going to listen, you're going to put a guide. You're not going to be heedless to say, I'm going to do things as I like. As I like, 
I'm not going to put that guide in front of me. Why should I? So many, they have guides, but they're not putting. What is making you not to put your guide there? Because your ego is going to say, why? You've been doing it just like this. Why have to consult every time? Why everything has to be? Why are you following in the footsteps of the Prophet then? Literally, we're saying walking in the footsteps, no? We're not even saying walking in the way, walking in the footsteps. So what is causing the man now? Because to be in Gaflat, because he's no longer in the footsteps. He's in the way, but he's walking his own way. Then you're going to learn, easy way or hard way. This is not going to bring you too much benefit. When you walk, when you are driving and you are in the fast lane, to be in the fast lane, you will get from this point to that point quicker than if you are in the slow lane, correct? But you have to be in the fast lane and there are rules in the fast lane. You don't abide by the rules in the fast lane, they will kick you out, they give you a ticket, or you're going to destroy yourself and other people. You cannot be in the fast lane now, that at least they say 65 miles per hour. And you say, I'm going to go 45 miles, I don't care. Or I'm going to drive more to the left, or I'm going to drive more to the right, or I'm going to go backwards, I'm still in the lane. No, you cannot do that, you will lose. And it is dangerous. Yeah. Gaflet. What makes us not want to put our shaykh there? Because we're still following so many other ones. Because the remembrance of your Prophet is still not strong enough. It's not there. You're not hearing his voice. You're not looking at his life. You're not looking at his example. His presence is not strong. You may give one million salawats a day. But that naqsh is not made yet. If you don't follow According to the passion of the Prophet, who are you following? Your own passion. What you feel is right, wrong, how you're angry, how you're sad, huh? you're just following. Then, understand your ego will trick you. No matter how high you get, your ego is going to trick you and it's going to make you to fall again. Shaitan went so high, he had mystical knowledge. He went so high, he was able to teach the angels. He was not an angel, but he was able to teach the angels. The Aulia are saying that he was worshipping here on the earth. Thousands of years he was worshipping everywhere. Everywhere you stand in the face of this earth, Shaitan has put his forehead there. Are you understanding? When we are walking, are we even thinking, oh, we're walking here. Shaitan put his head there to worship Allah, to worship, to worship, to worship, to worship. That Shah Naqshbandi is saying, if only I can find one handful of soil, one handful of dust, one handful of earth that Shaitan did not put his head to, to worship Allah, I would put all of mankind in that one handful to save them from Shaitan. But he said, I cannot find. He rose to the skies. He rose to the paradises because of his constant worship. He rose in mystical knowledge. He knows. When the ones living in paradise, they don't even know what is death because this is pre-eternity. He was already talking about death. When they don't know any separation, anything that is not from Jannat, feelings and understandings that's not from paradise, he was already telling them what these feelings are. Before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blew one breath, 
the holy breath to make Adam alayhi salam to enter into the form of the clay before that was done just looking at the form shaitan knew who this one is going to be but shaitan did not understand himself Evli Allah saying in every level of paradise he was worshipping for 40,000 years. 40,000 years. He was seeing the angels, he was talking to them, he was teaching them, some of them. But he did not know himself. And he did not want to know himself. Now, when he made the prostrations of Adam alayhi salam, now the order is saying not only to make prostration to Adam alayhi salam. Now this one is representing me. You have to serve this one. You have to learn from this one. You have to obey this one. Hazrati insan. That way, he will give you your secret and you'll rise to the station where you're supposed to be. Shaitan says no. La. He's saying la. From that time until now, he lost. So run. Prophet ﷺ is giving us the advice in the Ahir Zaman, don't run after so much knowledge. Don't run. Don't put yourself in front. Don't even try to be in front of official things. Pull yourself back. Keep your religion simple. Practice your religion sincerely. Pull yourself back to the top of a mountain. And wait for Sahibu Zaman to appear. Prepare for him. They're saying, yeah, but there's so many other hadiths saying this. Yeah, you don't know which hadith is where, for whom, for what time, for when. It's like a man entering into a full pharmacy and he has a headache but he starts taking things that is going to give him sickness because the medicine is not suited. Who is going to say what is the medicine? Oh, this is the point. Those ones who have knowledge. What knowledge? Those ones who know the books? Yes, they are knowers, the alims of the books. Then there are those ones that they can read the book before it is sent to this world. And those ones are the ones representing the prophets. As the prophet saying, the ones with knowledge, the alims of my nation, they are like the prophets of the Bani Israel. Don't think the alims mean you go to this university, you go to this university. These days people don't even go to university, they take some course online and they call themselves this alim and this shaykh. What is the proof now? They are like the prophets of the Bani Israel. What are they like, the prophets of the Bani Israel? They are the proof, one of the proofs of keramats. What the prophets of the Bani Israel that they can do? Those ones with knowledge, they can as well. Which is why for 1400 years, the believers are saying, following what the prophet is saying, there are those who know the Zahir knowledge and those who know the Batin knowledge. And those who know the Batin, it is higher than those who know the Zahir. And they know because Allah gives them that power. Allah gives them that power because they finish themselves. Now they are a mirror representing their Lord. And those ones, no matter how much they are finishing according to their level, what they are taking from those ones, from the Awliya Allah, what is necessary is given to them. So the miracles will keep happening. The Holy Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam.
what is his biggest miracle? People are saying, what is his biggest miracle? The Quran. What does that mean? Biggest miracle is the Quran. That means that he himself is a walking Quran. And those who are in his shadows, they walk the Quran and Karim. Look at the Sahabi Kiram. How did they come from station where they were, they were in ignorancy uh, era to become those ones who are companions to the Prophet? He turned their hearts and their hearts stayed. Turning their hearts, it is the biggest miracle to turn it away from this dunya to maula, to turn their hearts now following the Qibla. So don't look, because to split the sea, yes, Holy Prophet split the moon. But what he did was he split open the hearts of his Sahabis. And he took out the bad and he put it back together again. And that miracle continued until today. That their hearts, they have turned. And you by yourself, you know if that has happened in your life or not. And that those hearts, that they were dry and they never felt anything, now is turning to Allah and feeling something. That you're able to leave this world, you're able to understand what is your ego and shaitan and what are your desires and put your face away from that and putting your face to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're trying to pull you as much as they're trying to pull, you say no, you say la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah. And that fight must continue until we die. That fight makes us to become mujahid. That if we die in that fight, we will die as martyrs. That is the biggest jihad, the biggest struggle against to your nafs. You don't know what your nafs is, you cannot be in the struggle. Once you understand that nafs, oh, you understand how this nafs, how big, how powerful, how evil it is, that it is the only thing in creation that is challenging the authority of Allah. Nothing in creation is challenging that authority except for the nafs. Who is even knowing this? Who is even asking? Who is believing in this? Who is concentrating? This is what we are following, our share. And we're continuing. May it be accepted. May Allah make us to fight this time and in Ramadan and after Ramadan and our whole lives. May our fight be good, be holy, be pure. May we be able to step on shaitan in our ego. May we be able to step on dunya and our desires and come clean to our Lord. May we be candidates to be the ones that our Lord is saying, come, my servant. May peace enter into our hearts in this way until we pass, inshallah. May Allah bless our shaykh, raise him to higher station. And we're asking for his madad in every breath, in every step of the way. May Allah forgive us for his sake. May Allah bless us and protect us, inshallah, and give mercy to those ones who are turning sincerely to the way. And may Allah turn the minds and the hearts of those ones who are away from haq back to haq, inshallah. We're asking mercy for those ones who have passed, 
those ones who are about to come, those ones who are sick, and those ones who are dying. May Allah bring down all the wrong systems and the tyrants, inshallah. May Allah make us to be ready for Hazrat Mahdi, alayhi salam. Al-Fatiha.